Is Warren Buffett predicting the next stock market crash? What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor and today we're going to be speaking all about Warren Buffett and what he's been up to the last couple of months. This is the man of the moment, Mr. Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, who has significantly outperformed the broader market throughout his whole history. Now the man is 89 years old and the question has to be asked, has he lost his touch? This was the man who said one of my absolute favorite quotes in the world, to be fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy when others are fearful. And over the last few months, he has not stuck to his own word, but we will be getting to that later. Over the last couple of months, Warren Buffett has completely sold out of several company and trimmed his positions in many, many more. Everybody knows at this stage that he sold all of his positions in the US airline companies. Retail traders, on the other hand, the likes of you and me, your everyday person, have been making loads of money while these billionaires like Mr. Buffett have been losing out. Take a look at a few of these statistics from Robinhood for me. There are so many new investors on the platform. Their trading volumes went up over 300% over the last few months. Here are some of the most popular companies on the Robinhood platform. I mean, what? And guys, look at Hertz. Hertz is a company who literally filed for bankruptcy and had their stock price rise up well over 500% as a result. That is the stock market world we live in today. While the multi-billionaires, the hedge fund managers, the hedge fund analysts have all been selling stocks and not picking up any new positions, retail traders have been buying bankrupt companies and making loads of money. Is value investing dead? Is literally day trading bankrupt companies the new way to make a fortune? Do hedge fund managers and analysts have it all wrong or is it us retail investors who have everything all wrong? Today we're going to be speaking about all of that, about what Warren Buffett has been doing and why it is quite scary as an investor. Because right now, all is well and good. The S&P 500 is approaching its all-time highs. The Nasdaq has made new all-time highs. The worst news in the world can lead to a green day for whatever reason. Jay Powell's printers are absolutely off the charts right now and keeping the market alive. But can all of this last forever or is another crash? like Warren Buffett expects to happen, inevitable. Quite a few things I want to cover today, but what you can expect to be spoken about in today's video is his airline stock positions, his bank stock positions, every single stock we know that he has sold thus far, the one stock that he has gone ahead and bought, and when I think Buffett may decide to go ahead and start buying stocks again. So right before we get into the juicy information, can I ask you to please smash a like on the video? If we get 500 likes, I guarantee you Jay Powell will keep the money printer going and you will make loads of money. If you're new around here, please hit the subscribe button. We are trying to get to 10,000 subs ASAP. And lastly, drop me a comment down below with your thoughts. With all of that being said, let's get into the info. So we're gonna start it off in regards to airline stocks, okay? And Warren Buffett says that Berkshire sold all of its airline stocks because of the dirty Roni virus. Now in the past, Warren Buffett has said that there's two main reasons he will go ahead and sell a company. The first is when he feels that Berkshire needs the money for a more attractive opportunity. So you know if they don't have enough cash, if they see a better opportunity in the market, they'll sell one company to get a better company. But as of right now, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway has a record $137 billion cash pile. So we can assume that he's not selling because he needs the cash. That is quite clear to see. Now the second and more common reason that Warren Buffett decides to sell a stock, okay, is because because of changing fundamentals or a changing competitive landscape. So in regards to airlines, it was definitely because of changing fundamentals. Now this is something that we're gonna to have to keep in mind literally for the entire video because you're all aware of what's going on in the world. And I think that everybody's aware of the fact that the fundamentals for an awful lot of different companies and different industries will be changed for a considerable period of time. So why in particular was it the airline stocks he sold? Why hasn't he sold absolutely everything? So obviously airlines fundamentals have changed, you know? They're not gonna be able to fly at full capacity for a while who knows if it's going to be one year two years three years who knows if it's never going to be the same there will be changes no matter what but what about the likes of Apple okay his single biggest investment by an absolute mile inside iPhone City the massive Chinese factory town where half of the world's iPhones are produced. It employs as many as 350,000 people and has spawned a mini city that residents have taken to calling iPhone City. This is what the inside of an Apple factory or any other factory for that matter looks like. Is social distance implemented right now? No. The fundamentals for nearly every company on this planet are going to change. And that's something that's going to have to be accepted. Airlines may not be able to take 100% of passengers. Factories like this won't be able to hold 100% of employees. Now you might think I'm trying to clutch at straws here or whatever, but it's true, it really is true. Now I'm not saying that he should sell Apple, they're obviously in a much better, much safer position than any of the airline companies, and I'm sure the balance sheets and the debt of these airlines were also a contributing factor. It wasn't just the fact that 
their passenger loads aren't going to be as high for a year or two. But it is just something I wanted to get out there that the fundamentals for everyone is going to change. And here's something else, okay? When we sell something, very often it's going to be our entire stake. We don't trim positions. And this is going to take us very nicely onto bank stocks. As of the end of last year, Berkshire Hathaway is most heavily invested in the financial sector at 38% of their total portfolio. The second biggest is 26% in tech and a large portion of that will come from Apple. And then 15% is in consumer defensive. So nearly 40% as of the end of last year in the financial sector alone. I think everybody knows that Warren Buffett absolutely loves bank stocks and he always has. And he said things along the lines of, you know, betting on banks is like betting on the long term success of America. So to see the man who says things like that begin to sell massive portions of his bank stocks, it has to be worrying. Warren Buffett through Berkshire Hathaway has divested 84% of his holding in Goldman Sachs. I'm sure you've all heard about this one. They also sold 3% of their share in JP Morgan Chase. They sold 55.2 million shares of Wells Fargo in the fourth quarter of last year, reducing its investment in the embattled bank to 323.2 million shares. So a decent chunk of Wells Fargo they sold as well. But remember what he said before, in general, when he sells a company, he sells the entire stick. So why is he trimming? Why did he sell 84 percent of Goldman Sachs. It doesn't make a lot of sense. He's also sold nearly 500,000 shares in US Bancorp, 869,000 shares in Bank of New York Mellon, and 2.24 million shares in Bank of America. Now both Wells Fargo and Bank America, both of these happened the end of last year. And a lot of the reason we think we've seen this, okay, is because he doesn't want to have a larger than 10% stake in these bank stocks. Reason being, if you are over that 10% mark, which <laughs> not many people are ever going to do, but somebody like Warren Buffett could do, it could be classified as a bank holding company. This 10% threshold is often viewed as a line in the sand whereby Berkshire Hathaway is perceived to exercise control over a bank. So he wants to keep below 10%. So Bank of America, fair enough. He needed to trim his position to get down below 10% and he might well need to trim it again soon. Wells Fargo, he's now considerably down below 10% so we'll see what happens. If they get a good rally again though, he may well have to sell. US Bancorp, he is just barely below that 10% mark. Now JP Morgan and Chase, this is a weird one. And the two most concerning stocks that he did sell, in my opinion, in JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. He only has not even a 2% stake in JPM. An article that was literally from January 3rd, 2020. Why Warren Buffett loves JP Morgan Chase stock. He suggested that JPM ought to trade for three times tangible book value, which at the time of his comments would have implied a price of about $168 against a market price then of about $105. As of right now, JPM's 96.75, it's probably gonna open somewhere around the 98 to $99 range. Bank stock fundamentals undoubtedly have changed. In March 2020, the Federal Reserve slashed interest rates to zero in order to provide additional support to the US economy. For banks, which are among the biggest beneficiaries of rising interest rates, this was very bad news, obviously. But the thing is, if Buffett thought the fundamentals had really, really, really changed, he would have sold everything, like he did with airlines. So to me, there's a lot of concern with Goldman Sachs. I wouldn't really consider them as of right now, seeing just how much he sold. But maybe he just wants to free up some extra cash in a company that he thinks has a lot more room to go down further. And he just wants to buy up a lot of shares cheaper. I mean, I know, as I said at the start of the video, everything in the market is fantastic right now, but it could all go upside down at any time. What if the money printer stops working? As of late, I've just seen several contradictions in what Warren Buffett is saying, what he has said, and what he is doing, and what he has done. It's kind of all over the place a little bit. But from what we can see him doing, he definitely expects a market crash. If he didn't, he would be buying stocks right now. He wouldn't be slashing so many positions. Now I want to speak about the 21 stocks that Warren Buffett has sold so far. And let's keep in mind, he's not selling these because he needs cash. He's selling them because he thinks the fundamentals have changed and more than likely because he thinks a crash is coming. General Motors, first up, he only decreased his holding by 0.4%. Nothing crazy. Suncor Energy, again, only decreased it by 0.5%. Amazon, this is a very interesting one to me. They're literally at all time highs. Now we did only sell 0.7% of these guys compared to the fourth quarter of last year. But still, it is odd. I'm not sure why he's doing this. Again, it goes against what he said in the past. Liberty Cirrus XM Group, a company I've literally never even heard of, reduced that stake by 0.8%. Axalta Coding Systems, again, 0.8%. Biogen, again, 0.8%. 8%. Teva Pharmaceutical, 1%. Verisign, 1%. Davida, 1%. Liberty Global, 2%. Liberty Latin America, 3%. Synchrony Financial, another financial company, 3% trim. JP Morgan Chase, we already know about these guys, and again, that was a 3% cut. Goldman Sachs, 84%.
Right, a company called Travelers, he completely exited his position. And interestingly, he also completely sold out of his position in Philips 66. And this does mean that Suncor and Occidental Petroleum, Oxy, you probably all know who they are, are the only energy sector stocks left in the portfolio. Very interesting. And then obviously he went ahead and he sold all of his airline stocks. I just mean, it's weird, guys. It, it really is weird. And the thing is, guys, if you go onto YouTube and you search up something like Warren Buffett bank stocks, okay? Warren Buffett. Banks are very attractive compared to most other securities. Three months ago. Warren Buffett, America's banks are in good shape now. One month ago. Legendary investor Warren Buffett hasn't given up on banks one month ago. So much contradiction out there. And to just add a little bit more contradiction to the list, okay? The only company Mr. Buffett has actually gone ahead and purchased is PNC Financial Services and he upped his stake by 6% in this company. Now these are a regional bank, so they are a bank. Probably could tell that by the picture that says PNC Bank. And they are the nation's sixth largest bank by assets. I don't know guys, it's all just so weird to be honest with you. I'm trying to make sense of it and it's very difficult to do so. As I said, there's so much conflicting information. And the last thing of today is, when do I think that Warren Buffett will be willing to buy companies again? This is a really tough one for me, okay? We said the quote earlier on, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And I don't know, there's not been a time in my life, maybe the Great Recession, where people haven't been as fearful as we were here. I mean, the whole world literally went into lockdown. The whole world went into a meltdown. People couldn't leave the house because they were afraid for their lives. They were literally afraid for their lives. It doesn't get much scarier than that. And Warren Buffett wasn't willing to buy here. You know what I mean? When people were more fearful than ever. Now you could say people are being greedy. You know, a lot of people, myself included, are still buying stocks despite the fact that we understand that, you know, things could go south. So is he going to be fearful when people are greedy? and fearful when people are fearful and just never go ahead and buy stocks again, that doesn't seem like the case. The thing is guys, okay, there's a lot more pressure on Warren Buffett than there is on me or you, okay? If I invest into the stock market and the stock market goes down 50%, I've just lost some money and I believe that it will come back at some stage, even if it is years down the line. And I'm investing in significant amounts of money in the grand scheme of things. I don't have the billions and billions and billions of dollars that Warren Buffett has to invest. And I don't own a holding company with a market cap of 438.77 billion with lots of people depending on me. A lot more goes on behind the scenes with a man like Warren Buffett investing than your average person. What he does will directly impact many, many people and their well-being and their wealth. Maybe he's just sitting back and he's thinking, you know what? I've made all of this money, I've had a fantastic career, I don't need to mess with this. I've caught enough bottoms in my days, I've made enough correct calls in my days, I don't need to deal with this for a little while. From a logistical point of view, a second crash is completely and utterly inevitable. I mean, if it wasn't for this fella, the market crash would have happened already, simply put. I mean, the S&P is only down about 8% from its recent highs. It's been down as low as 4.5%. It does not make any sense considering the world we live in. The fundamentals of the world have changed. If I had to guess, when I believe Warren Buffett will start investing considerable amounts of money again, it'll be when the world is largely back to normal. You know, maybe we'll have a vaccine. Airplanes will be at full capacity. The cruise ships will be going again. There'll be big massive raves full of people hugging and kissing and throwing around beach balls and nobody will have to worry about contracting a deadly virus. From what I've seen from Warren Buffett is that's what he wants to see before he begins heavily investing again. But right now, I really don't think anybody knows what's going on in his head. I mean guys, Nothing makes sense right now. The world doesn't make sense. The stock market doesn't make sense. Warren Buffett doesn't make sense. Ray Dalio doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense. So guys, that is it for today's video. If you did watch it all the way until the end, can I please ask you to drop me a comment down below? Just let me know your thoughts and let me know what you think of the whole situation. Because at the end of the day, a lot of it is complete and utter speculation. We're just trying to guess what's going on in this one great investor's head. And please also smash the like button if you did watch all the way to the end. It genuinely helps me out absolutely massively. I appreciate you so much. And subscribe if you're new around here. We post every single day, baby. With all that being said, hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. I will see you tomorrow. Peace.